What is some of your expertise in in teaching Photoshop, Stephen? What what are some of your spe specialties with it? Well, um, I think what I bring to the party is a fair amount of experience because I've had a full career as an art director and graphic designer and multimedia designer. So I've been in and out of the program and related programs in a real workmanlike way. I'm just trying to achieve the objective of delivering a, a real product to a client. So I understand working mm -hmm. under a deadline. I also understand trying to achieve an objective not based on what the tool can do, but what I need to get done. So that brings a whole different attitude to bear rather than somebody who's sort of playing and letting the program guide them. Mm -hmm. So I have, a, I have a different orientation. Um, I've also taught the program a fair amount, so I've sort of worked up some things that tend to work with people. And um, I also enjoy working with people and tend to work on accommodating my teaching to what this, the group of students tends to need. You've been with yeah. Photoshop for a long time. You've been through the development process, haven't you? Yeah, I've, it was so long ago, I think it was in the 80s actually, that I had a friend that worked with Adobe that asked me to come in and do some product testing. And, you know, they put you in a room and they have themselves in another room behind a glass wall and speakers or microphones and all this. And they're trying to observe and record your experience with the product. Mm -hmm. And if I recall this right, they were trying to get me to understand layers and copying something from one layer to the next, which frankly I found completely baffling, which helps me as a teacher because I understand how alien some of this stuff can feel when you've looked at it for the first time. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, you can explain the mystery of layers to beginning Photoshop students? Well, we try to. Um, we just completed this little introductory lesson where we try to do that. Um, it's the funniest darn thing. Often adults have a hard time with a totally new paradigm, something they've never worked with. And I try to come up with metaphors. For mm -hmm. example, I'll say that um, if you imagined a shelving unit that was all had glass shelves. Okay. All right. And you put painted a red dot on the, the top shelf and below it was a, you know, rectangle of orange, but it was shifted over a little bit. You would see through the glass, but you see part of the shape on the second layer and yeah. that sort of thing. So I'm always working with, uh, on how can we explain this in a way that makes intuitive sense to people. Yes. You know? Yeah. Um, but that all being said, it really just comes down to time like anything else. Learning this product is like learning an instrument, you know, or any other art form. You, you just cannot learn it in a couple of hours. But it helps to have somebody walking you through the program. It, it seems to help most people because, there's, because they can say, I don't get this, what happened here, or they hit the wrong button and they're able to recover because somebody can come over and say, oh, it's this. But if you're working at home with the Google or even the video method, very often people just become stopped. And you because they have, <laughs> frankly, other things to do <laughs> in life, they it becomes a real wall. And then they say, oh, Photoshop's just a pain. So I don't have the b bandwidth for this. So th they stop every time they need a new question answered. Yeah. And, and so, you know, it's interesting, talking about this makes me almost think that the ideal scenario might be a class or maybe regularly space classes and meetup groups for people. So that if people took classes and then worked with their peers and then took a class and worked with peers, that might be a real creative way for people to move forward with the program. If the peers were cooperative and generous and exactly. sharing and helping each other. Yes, that would be what are, what are we What are we going to learn in this intro to Photoshop? Uh, beginning set of exercises that you've assembled for us. It's going to be really, really simple and straightforward. And um, we're just going to make three layers. And we're going to have a box and a circle and a squiggle. It's called the squiggle exercise. Okay. And it's going to enable us to have an introduction to layers, naming, moving layers around, changing the opacity, 
we're going to add our first effect, a drop shadow. Drop okay. shadows are really cool. This is a great graphic design trick to make something look like it's lifting up off the surface a little bit. Yes. And then we're going to make a squiggle with the brush, resize the brush, change the hardness of the brush, save it as a Photoshop file, and save that also as a JPEG file, which is a flattened version of the file that then we can send to somebody because unless somebody has Photoshop, they can't see a Photoshop file. Ah. We need to make or generate a flattened JPEG file to send to our relatives so they can. You know, oh, that makes enjoy sense. This. I can pull up JPEGs on my home and everybody computer. Can, yeah. yeah. So. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. what, where do you recommend students shop for their first, uh, their first Photoshop program, and what are okay. you recommending for 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 th these exercises? Well, if you can get a hold of Photoshop, um, he here's here's the thing to consider. Cost is a huge factor, and um, I don't know. I think Photoshop is what eight hundred standalone, something like that. It's a pretty big chunk of change. Okay. If you have a person in the family that is a student or a teacher, okay, uh, at any kind of institution, yeah, public well, school not like uh, yeah, even a two-year proprietary school, but but not like an uh, an adult ed program that okay. wouldn't, wouldn't qualify. You can go to a place like Journey Ed, J U R N E Y Ed dot com, and there's some other place online, and even maybe directly to Adobe, and apply for um, an educator's or a student discount, and then you can get Photoshop for one ninety nine. It's quite a, is, quite a difference. It comes in the affordable range, yeah. Uh, you're using CS four in these exercises. Where yep. can you put that in context for us who don't know the generation? Yeah, sure, Mark. You're currently um, the version that Adobe is selling right now is CS5. Oh, I so see. So that's probably what you would be getting if you, well, that's definitely what you'd be buying at Adobe because they'll only put out one version at a time. So actually that's probably what I would suggest is to get a standalone copy of Photoshop. And why I say standalone is the Creative Suite is what people generally tend to buy that's quite a bit more expensive and then Photoshop becomes one of a suite of products but you can buy Photoshop by itself and that's probably what you want to look for if that's your specific goal is to learn Photoshop okay is the CS is, are the creative suite is it is it for art directors and people that are working professionally in graphic design I think probably just because of the cost I would say yep. <laughs> that's why it would be for people who are professional because just paying for it mm -hmm. becomes a little bit of a burden package yep. discount um, uh, S Steve what's the difference between this is a dumb question pardon my ignorance on it but a, pro a program like s Photoshop and something like Art Rage or uh, Photoshop Elements or mm, some of the yeah. other uh, m more accessible, less less expensive right. versions. Um, one of the things to look for is a program called GIMP, which is totally GIMP. free. Yeah, and it's set so you can Google that and download that, and that's been free, open source, I believe, for quite a while, and it's set up very, very much like Photoshop. It, it's certainly not the same product, mm. um, but for your money's worth, which would be free, uh, it's certainly worth it. You know, it's worth taking a look at it. Could we do some of these same exercises you're, you're, you're teaching in, in us? This one here, on. we could do the same exercise again. Oh, wow. Yeah, okay. so the layers are sitting there on the lower right and the toolbars on the left. Very similar. And what about older yeah. versions of Photoshop before there even was a Creative well, Suite? Well, yes, if you have one like, you know, um, sitting on a machine at home that's an older version, I would just go ahead and work that thing to death and use it. Oh. You know, because there's no real reason to need to be in the most up to date version of software if you're not working in a work group or something like that. If you're sitting at home and you're trying to make a business card, you know, or edit an image, if it's CS3, CS2, just plain CS, it really doesn't matter. You're going to be getting a lot of bang for the buck compared to running out and buying the most expensive thing and keep in mind that the more recent versions of all the CS products are wanting more and more you know power under the hood on the oh, computer. Oh, that's a good so point, yeah. Yeah. But what about Photoshop 6, Photoshop 7 if you've got an old copy of that and you're... In Even your that I would, if I have an older machine and I've got that, that's a great tool to use. Why not? Yeah, we taught a program at, um, in Austin 
in a uh, room that had 12 new computers but happened to have Photoshop 6 on it. Yeah. And there were very few very fundamental differences between that and a current version. Now, some people okay. might take me to task on that and go, oh, well, golly, it's got all these other new things. But really, the basics were there. And this is a very old version of Photoshop. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Great. Good to know. Yeah. Well, thanks, Steve. I'm, we're right. really looking forward to the exercises. And, uh, and, and I know the caliber of teacher you are because I've had the pleasure of being in that Photoshop 6 class, and it was dynamite. Yeah, I couldn't believe fun. all the stuff we learned in two weekends. Great. Thanks so much. Thank you.